Hey, it's Heather, and today I'm making a tarte flambe, which is a very fancy way of saying bacon on puff pastry. It is a wonderful dish for the holidays, and it sounds really great, but it's not that hard to make. Um, so I'm going to start with the prize ingredient, of course, bacon. I have here um, enough for two tarts, and I have about mm, seven slices of bacon per um, tart, and you basically just saute the bacon. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to get um, the cheese layer. I know that sounds like a bacon cheese, that's a lot. It's uh, a light cheese, or a combination of two cheeses I have here. Uh, fromage blanc, which as you can see here, amazingly, fat free. And uh, I have a crumb fresh, which is um, not fat free. but. Uh, they're both very delicious. Um, they're basically French, but you can find them at lots of stores here. And if you cannot find them, not to worry, because you can replace it with um, sour cream and cottage cheese, but you do it in the blender so that you get everything smooth. So it's an easy one, I'm telling you. You can see they're pretty different consistencies, and they will combine to make a really wonderful, mild, flavored, but <clears throat> not without presence. It's not just there for the sake of nothing. And to that, I'll add pepper. Don't be shy with the pepper. Also, a little bit of oil. I have olive oil here. It is what is handy for me. Canola oil would be great. It's about <clears throat> two tablespoons. And then I'm also going to add a little bit of flour just to give it a little, mm, so it can hold up, tablespoon and a half. Now I think I'm going to just whisk this very quickly because I just want to make sure all the flour is nicely incorporated. And even though, of course, bacon is wonderfully salty, I do like to just add a little bit. I like to have flavor at every step. Not too much, but just a little bit. Now we're going to put that aside until we are ready for it. All right, so my bacon is going nicely. You definitely want it to get brown. It's going to cook again, so it doesn't need to be like totally, totally done um, because you're going to put it in the oven. Now the bacon is cooking down very nicely, and as it always does, there is a lot of fat that was rendered in this pan. So before I put my onions in, I got to get some of that oil out. i turn it off. I'm just going to remove the bacon and drain it. And, all right, simple. Ta da! And it makes a difference. You don't really need all that oil. But don't kid yourself. It's not diet food just because I drained the bacon. Okay, so back on. I'm going to put my onions in. I have two onions, medium, just sliced thin. And I don't want them to caramelize. They'll certainly pick up some color from the. Um, the bacon drippings, but I do not want them caramelized. And I'm going to add my bacon back in. All right, so I'm going to let that cook down. Now we're going to get to the slightly more complicated part of the recipe, but it could be much harder than it's going to be. It's puff pastry. Of course you can make it from scratch. I've done it many times. I don't do it anymore because I can buy high quality puff pastry. And this one, you know, is a little harder to find before, but Petrus Farmers makes it. It's, it's really easy to find. And uh, I have about 14 ounces, which is perfect, because that's enough for two. It comes like this. You unwrap it. You thaw it a few hours in the fridge. And the thing about puff pastry is what makes it puff is it has quite a lot of butter, quite a lot of butter in it. So if it's too hard, you're just not going to be able to work with it. Ah, conversely, if it is too soft, it's going to give you some problems. So. So first thing that you see, I floured my board, and I'm going to unfold it, and I'm going to cut it in half. So now, I'm going to roll it out. Nothing fancy. We're just rolling it out. It's sticky, so don't be shy with the flour. We just want it to fit our baking pan. So that's a pretty easy shape to do. You're already halfway there. Okay. 
Now, as you see, I keep picking it up because you don't want it to stick. And I want to keep it as rectangular as I can. It does not have to be perfect. That's part of the charm, a little rustic uh, look. Okay, this is good enough for me. I'm good to go. So I have my pan waiting. And I'm just going to roll it onto my pin like so. And then just bring it back down. I always do what we call blind bake the puff pastry first, which means I just put it in and let it cook partially because I can't stand undercooked pastry. So now here, what am I doing? I am what we call docking the puff pastry because while we like it fluffy, we don't want it to be huge. We don't want it to be like a popover. Um, we want to keep it somewhat flat. I'm going to chill this down. It's always good to let your doughs rest cold for a bit before you actually bake them. And I mean not very long, 10, 15 minutes tops. So I'm going to roll out the other chart and then we'll put it all together. I'm going to start with my cheese. All right, you need to leave a quarter of an inch on the edge. All right, I'm just going to literally sprinkle my mixture on top of the tart. The oven to, to blind bake the pastry should be at 375, but we're gonna crank it up to 425 to cook the tarts. Now, I don't like to do too many things in the oven at once, but that's the reality of holiday cooking. That is gonna take us about 15 minutes. Basically, we are trying to cook the puff pastry. Everything else is done, uh, so we're gonna let it cook. We're gonna let it fill the house with wonderful aromas so that when our guests enter, they'll be like, ah, oh, what is that wonderful bacon smell? So, pizza wheel, because essentially, I mean, it's kind of like a pizza, right? And you just, uh, Cut it in individual portions. I mean, whatever amount you think your crew is going to like, however big. One of the best things about this, for me, it hasn't met a wine it doesn't like. Okay, now, what to drink? Like I said, anything, I'm going with a cava, which is an inexpensive Spanish sparkling wine made exactly like champagne, but with different grapes and uh, it's just so festive. This just feels like the holidays. My house smells like Thanksgiving, even without the turkey. So, do my thing. Mmm, that's yummy. Bacon. Bacon. And I'm going to talk much more about the wine that I would have surrounding a holiday meal in a very near episode featuring this bacon tart. So for wines, for recipes, for much, much more, please hit my website, sogood.tv. Cheers.